finally have a house with a little character. Oh, it's going to take a little fixing up, but it's going to be worth it. I'm tired already. I'm glad this is the last load. <laughs> James, Helen, give us a hand. <laughs> He took the tape off my box. But I was just gonna... James, your sister has a cold and isn't feeling well. Now stop teasing her. Why don't we leave him at the old house? Listen, are we gonna have to have another talk? No. Then I think you better start picking up. Come on, come on. Excuse me, folks. <laughs> I'm Mrs. Verity, one of your neighbors. And you must be the... Uh... Oh, the Harrisons. I'm Amy. Uh, yes, right. The Harrisons. <laughs> I knew you were coming. And uh, what line of work are you, sir? I'm a computer engineer. You know, it's odd. You working with all these newfangled gadgets, and yet you bought such a antiquated house. You might say you're living in two worlds. <laughs> Did the realtor tell you these strange things about your house? Strange things? Well, I should have known they wouldn't say anything, but uh, your house has a long history of strange goings on. But what I mean is, rumor has it that there was once a spirit of sorts living here. Uh, Mrs. Verity, it's been very nice talking to you, and uh, I'm delighted to find out that we have such friendly neighbors. Yeah. Uh, I would, however, appreciate it if you would refrain from telling those kinds of stories in front of my children. I mean, after all, they do have to live here. It's all right, Dad. I'm not scared of ghosts. I want to hear more. James, I thought I told you to help your sister pick up. But I did. Please. If you'll excuse us, Mrs. Verity, as you can see, we're really rather busy right now. Yes. Of course. Well, we'll talk later. Yes. Perhaps.
sure you pick it up. Do I have to do it now? I'm afraid so. Son? I need to fill for my sister's cough. All right. No problem. What is this, a joke, young man? What? A joke? Practical joke? Take thy leaves of lungwort, which is a herb of Jupiter. Boil them and make a syrup, which will much ease a cough. I counsel thee also to say certain charms over thy sick child. Like this? <laughs> I didn't write this. And man, I am very busy. I have no time for pranks. But Dad, I didn't write the prescription or whatever it was. Honest, Dad. James, if you didn't do this, who did? Well, I don't know. No, that's not good enough. I'm tired of hearing the same answer for every time you get in trouble. But, Dad... No, the case is closed. Son, the next time your mother tells you to do something, do it. All right? I gotta go to work. Give me a kiss. Hi, Tim. Boy, what a bum deal. And I didn't even do anything this time. What's the matter, boy? Stop it! There's nobody there. Nice to meet you, son. How do you do, Father? <gasps> James, look what you've done! But I didn't do anything! No, it wasn't the boy's fault. I guess I should be more careful in my old age. I'm so sorry, Father. Um, coffee's ready. Oh, marvelous, marvelous. James, would you like to serve Father Hanover his coffee? Sure, Mom. Father Hanover stopped by to see if you'd like to join the church choir. Mom, you know I can't sing. Well, after some practice, I think you could. You'll really enjoy the choir, young man. We have a lot of boys your age. I really sing bad. Mom just doesn't know how bad. <laughs> ah! <gasps> James! What? I think you'd better leave the room. We'll talk about choir later. Okay. Oh, no, don't blame the boy, Mrs. Harrison. Could happen to anyone. You don't know how lucky you are to be a dog, Tim. Sometimes the world can be so unfair to a kid. Someone's playing tricks on me, and they're getting me into a lot of trouble. Who would want to play tricks on me? Hey, wait a minute. That kid hanging around here on his bike. And he was in the drugstore, too. Simon. Simon, that's his name. Yeah, and he was laughing at me when I gave that crazy prescription to the pharmacist. Maybe he's responsible for all the tricks going on in my house. You know, like the lamp falling over and the strange breezes. Yeah. That's it. You wait here a minute. <coughs> trick you played on that guy in the drugstore. Yeah, real funny, Simon. You know, I think you wrote this. Me? You're wacko. Oh, yeah, and I also think you've been sneaking around my house playing tricks on me, and you better knock it off. Hold on, Harrison. Let me see that. I couldn't have written this. I don't even know what some of these words mean. And the ones I do know, they're misspelled. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Besides, I'm a good speller. 
And my penmanship is better than whoever wrote this. That's the kind of stuff you've been pulling off at my house. I can't make the wind blow. Yeah, I guess you can. Of course I can. Glad to see thee at thy studies. I like thy Latin mostly, but to our business, we must seek out a witch, witch, and bring her to justice. And that is thy neighbor, widow Verity. We will be very busy, thou and I, for now ye are my apprentice. Know it and like it. Thomas Kemp, Esquire of Sorcerer. What is it, Tim? There's nobody here. Or is there? tricks on me. When you're a real cruddy guy for hassling me like this. And you better listen. I'm not going to work for you or be your apprentice. No way. And another thing. There are no such thing as sorcerers these days. you're going to blame this on Tim? Dad, you got to listen to me. What's the matter with you? Using your room for a football field. I swear I didn't do this. There's no excuse for this. I'm going to tell you something, young man. After you get through cleaning up this rubbish pile, you're going to go in the back of the house and you're going to clean up that rubbish pile. 
Now, there's going to be no allowance for two weeks. When it resumes, you're going to reimburse your sister for her cake. Now, have I made myself perfectly clear? Dad, I swear I didn't do this. James, you're trying my patience. Honey, I'm ready to snap. A ghost did this. I think. <clears throat> I'm going to pretend I didn't hear that. Now, you've always been a mischievous child, but this is the worst thing that you have ever... Honey, I think you better talk to him, because if I stick around any longer, I'm going to turn him right over my knee. You know, your father's right. I mean, you've gotten into trouble before, but this is ridiculous. Now, unless things change around here, your father and I are going to have to take some dramatic steps to curb your erratic behavior. Is that clear? I guess this means you don't believe in ghosts. Yes, something like that. I'm going to get even with this Thomas Kemp guy. I only said I'd help him or work for him so he'd stop wrecking my room. The truth is, Tim, I'm going to meet him head on. Nobody caused me this much trouble and gets away with it. Nobody. It says a poltergeist. Poltergeist is a riotous kind of spirit who does not display himself in the conventional way. Instead, he makes a great deal of noise and throws things. In short, a poltergeist is best described as a general prankster. Well, what do you think? No doubt about it. It's got to be what Thomas Kemp is. Does it say anything about how to get rid of him? Sorry, James. You're out of luck. What am I going to do? If I don't get rid of Thomas Kemp soon, he's going to get me into more trouble. Maybe you really don't have a poltergeist. You don't believe me either, do you, son? Well, I've been thinking about it. And I do believe that strange things have been happening to you. But you got to admit, it's kind of hard to believe in ghosts. You wouldn't be saying that if you lived in my house. Maybe not. Well, I've got to go. I've got to get this book back before my sister finds out it's missing. See you later. Forgive whoever did this, for they know not what they do.
dare you do this in my house? But, Miss Faraday, you should be ashamed of yourself. I know it looks like I did this. I am tired of your pranks. Yesterday, my fireplace lit in the heat of the day. And my dishwasher kept going off and on. And someone turned my sprinklers on. And the doorbell kept ringing all night long. Well, I have called Sheriff Evans and he is stopping by to fill out a report. Meanwhile, you clean up this mess. Pick up the brush and the can. Now, follow me to the garage. And I don't want to hear a peep out of you. I know something like this is hard to believe, especially when it's your own son. In fact, I wouldn't have believed it myself if I hadn't seen James near the announcement board. Lately, James has been acting strangely. It's really bothering us. We just don't know what we're going to do. Thomas Kemp, you really did it this time. Boy, am I going to get it. ashamed of yourself for harassing a law-abiding member of the community. And slandering her in public is against the law. Another thing, son, tampering with church property is a shameful act. You better say your prayers tonight. Do you have anything to say for yourself, James? No. Why? Well, I... Never mind. Your father will deal with you when he returns from work. Meanwhile, you clean up for Mrs. Verity. Yes, Mom. I can't take this anymore. But how do I get rid of someone I can't even see? And I need help. But who would help me? Nobody even believes me. Top of the morning to you, Mrs. Verity. I'm so glad you could make it on the spur of the moment, Bert. Well, when people want a handyman, they usually want them right away. Hey, wait a minute. Miss Faraday, she was one that said there were strange things going on in our house. Maybe she believes in poltergeist. Miss Faraday. Can I talk to you for a minute? Well, make it quick. You've got a lot of work to do. I know who did that. I do, too. You. Remember when you tried to tell my mom and dad that there was a spirit living in our house? Yes. But what does that have to do with all this? Well, you were right. There is a spirit. A poltergeist. A prankster ghost. And he did that, not me. James, what goes on in your house has nothing to do with what has happened here. You did this. And you're not going to blame it on your house. But Miss Fern, I... I've heard enough. Now you get back to work or I'm going to call your mother. Excuse me, lad. But I couldn't help overhearing your conversation with Mrs. Verity. You're in some terrible trouble, aren't you? I don't need another lecture, mister. Ah, you can call me Bert. And you've got me wrong. You see, I believe your story about the poltergeist. How do you know about poltergeist? Oh, well, now, I was once in a predicament very much like your own. Oh, mercy, was I ever in trouble. Well, what happened? Well, now, come on over here with me and I'll tell you. When I was a young lad in Ireland, there was a poltergeist living in our house. And just like you, I was blamed for everything he did. Although, I must admit, his pranks were not as severe as for this. You and I are going to have to prepare a ceremony. We are? You mean I can help too? Certainly, lad. But now, tell me an important thing. 
Do your parents know about this troublemaker? They're not the type to believe that sort of thing. Oh, that type, eh? Well, then, we're going to have to work in secrecy. Another thing. Did your poltergeist give himself a name? Yeah, he calls himself Thomas Kemp Esquire Sorcerer. An Englishman. They're the most mischievous of the lot. Our work is going to be cut out for us, lad. But now, listen to me carefully. For this is what we're going to have to do. Mm. Did you hand that to your dad? Sure. Where's mine? Well, James, until your pranks stop, I'm afraid there won't be any desserts for you. Mom, come on. I, 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 come on now. You heard your mother. Dad, can mm. I have some shelves put in my room? What for? Well, I've been thinking of spending a little more time studying, and I'm going to need the extra room for my books and study material. Well, that's a very nice thought, but why the sudden interest in your schoolwork? Well, things haven't been going so hot around here. And I thought if maybe I work harder on my grades, I won't get into so much trouble. Well, if spending more time with your studies is going to help keep you out of trouble, you can have a whole room full of shelves. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. <laughs> then maybe we can put you back on the apple pie list. Thanks, Mom. Mm -hmm. Oh, one more thing, Dad. Yeah. Can I have the job done by Bert Ellison? Miss Verity says he's the best handyman around. Miss Verity? Are you two talking? Well, no, but but everybody says that Bert Ellison's the best. Well, I've heard of him. I mean, he's got a good reputation. It's okay by me. Thanks, Dad. You're going to be glad you let me have the shelves. Nice to meet you, Mr. Ellison. It's my pleasure, ma'am. I'm only too glad to be doing some work in such a beautiful home. Why, thank you. Actually, it was James's idea for the shelves. What a smart little lad he is, too, ma'am. Well, I'd best be getting started. Perhaps you could show me to your room, James, and we'll be getting out of your mother's way. Okay, follow me. Maybe I can help, too. Oh, sure. I can always use an extra hand now and then. Of course, it's uh, up to your mother here. Well, I think it'll be all right. Just make sure you don't make a nuisance out of yourself. I won't, I promise. Walk this way. We must work quick, Dad. Don't want to arouse the suspicion of your mother. What do you want me to do? Well, first of all, pull down the shade. Years. What are you going to do with that? Well, I'm going to try to coax your friend Thomas Camp into it. Once inside, I'll cork it, and that'll be his new home forever. That's simple, huh? Now it might sound simple, but it can be most difficult. Be ready now, lad. Put your hands up on the table. thy unquiet spirit. Return whence thy came, Thomas Kemp. Be gone. He's a 
feisty individual, isn't he? Does he know what he's supposed to do? Oh, he knows all right. Come on now, Mr. Kemp. Let's be coming along now. We only want to send you home. Miss Klaus, wouldn't you like to join your ancestors, Mr. Kemp? They're probably missing you right this very moment. and the bottle method usually never fail. Do not think that I am so dull of wit that I may be tricked twice. Now it's clear to me why we couldn't capture Kemp today. He's been caught by the bottle method before. Wait a minute. When I first moved in, I uncorked this. And ever since then, strange things have been happening. Well, it's no wonder, lad. You see, it was you who released the ghost of Thomas Kemp. Isn't there anything else we can do? Well, there is another method. It's most complicated. And I cannot guarantee its effectiveness against a ghost as cunning as Thomas Kemp. What do we have to do? Well, first we must locate his grave. And then we must help him return to it. Here he be. Here lieth the body of Thomas Kemp, doctor, sheriff, merchant, apothecary. What's apothecary mean? But oh, now, Kemp's peers couldn't have put sorcerer on a stone and, and then buried him in the churchyard, now could they? I guess not. But there's not much time, lad. Tonight's the the last of the full moon. And what we have to do must be done under its light. At night? Here? Aye. At 15 minutes to midnight, meet me here and bring with you one of your mother's brass curtain ring. Well, the ring I can get is sneaking out at 12 o'clock at night. I don't know. I mean, if I get caught... I'm afraid you don't have too much choice.
What's the matter? We're a wee bit late. I had a little bit of trouble. Trouble? What kind of trouble? Does anybody know you've come here? No. Well, at least I don't think so. Oh, well, in that case, we're going to have to make a brisk pace for ourselves. What's the writing? Well, I'm not exactly sure myself. My grandfather only told me that it was very old and very necessary. One thing's certain, though. We're going to need it for our battle with Mr. Kemp. will find his permanent slumber in this little box. You see, the combination of the, the symbols and the circle and the special fork stick will lure him irresistibly into our trap. Tom is Cam, are ye with us? If so, enter into the circle and let us speak with you. Tom is Cam, we summon thee. Make thy presence known. Ah, come on now, Mr. Kemp. Time is getting short. Thomas Kemp, come into thy circle and keep thy rest. Wait. This is where we have to go very carefully. We've got to play him like a fish. is more cunning than I thought. He's gonna wake the whole town. Aye, precisely his plan. Why would he go out at this time of night? I don't know, but I'll tell you one thing. He's not gonna see his allowance for a year if he's responsible for ringing that bell. Oh! Thomas Kemp! I summon thee this minute! Can't you hurry, Bert? Can't you go any faster? I will. I will. I'm doing my best. Kemp! You cannot fight these powers that I have set before you. So why don't you be a good fella and come along now? Here he is now, lad. Come on now, Mr. Kemp. Come on. It's only a little farther now. Come on. Enter thy circle now. And then you'll have peace. Is that it? Is he gone forever? Forever. As far as you're concerned. 
Look, he left a note. We have won this time, and I salute thee. It's just as well, for thy modern times have me weary and tired, and I was wrong about Widow Verity. She is not a witch. 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 She only seemed to be. Even though my visit was brief, was it not fun? <laughs> What a sense of humor that Kemp has. He's not going to come back, is he? Oh, no, I don't know about that. Maybe in a hundred years or two, he'll come back to visit a little boy just like you and cause him some turmoil. But at least you know it won't be you. Thank goodness. But now, make sure, lad, now you don't do anything to tell... I know. Don't tell anybody, because they wouldn't believe me anyway. Aye. That's right. Well, James. I'll be seeing you, lad. Thanks, Bert. I never could have done it without you. You really saved me. I'll never forget it. That's thanks enough. You are, James. This is an outrage against the church. It's preposterous, utterly preposterous. I'll have to look in the law books on this one. Do you realize you've wakened half the town? You've really done it this time, son. You're in big trouble. I know, Dad. At least that's the end of it, Tim, huh? Thomas Kemp, Esquire Sorcerer, can't bother me anymore. <laughs>